And now we just have to very carefully ask who everyone's attached to. All right. So um, you already decided who the number two is attached to. It's attached to the number three. And then it's also attached to the number one and an oxygen and the OET. So you got this exactly right. And then we simply have to go around the ring and see who everyone is attached to. And you're doing fine, except you haven't actually, um, you, we're just having trouble showing who the number six is attached to. So let's take our time and show who is the number six going to be attached to, according to the arrows from this picture. For, yeah, for whatever reason, I, I skipped some of my mechanism here. Let's see. No, I, I don't think so. That's not the problem. Um, your mechanism is exactly right. This is the exact right mechanism. We just have to trust these arrows. The leading group hasn't left yet. All we've done so far is this step here. So uh, it's not a mechanism problem. We just have to trust the arrows and show who's actually connected to the number six. So according to these arrows, who is attached to the number six? Um, the number six is attached to five. That's right, which we've got here. Good. And uh, a single bonded oxygen. That was one of the things that was giving you trouble. And an ester group. That's right. Voila. And I'm going to keep putting in my asterisks here to show this is the former carbonyl carbon and this is the former carbonyl oxygen. And the number six is also attached to this ethoxide group over here. So the thing that was messing you up really was just not breaking this pi bond, because then we were getting too many bonds in the number six. And the L group has not left yet, because all we've done so far is, so far we're still in this picture. We're still in this picture where the nucleophile has attached, but the L group hasn't left yet. Okay. Okay, that looks like you've gone ahead to the next step. That looks good. That's right. When the leaving group, so who is it that's going to take this alpha hydrogen? The leaving group that just left. Mm -hmm. The leaving group that just left now takes the alpha hydrogen. This is not a new reagent. It's just something that was produced right. as part of the mechanism. And this is the one step that does is not an equilibrium step. This goes to completion and drives the reaction along. Now we've finally done everything that can happen from step one, and now the chemist has to add the step two reagents. And again, we get a beta carbonyl ester. It just so happens that there's a ring involved, and so again, a 1, 3 dicarbonyl. Well, I think that you made some progress on drawing rings here. You were using some good techniques. You drew the right general structure. It was just this one carbon that gave you trouble. There were two issues here that I think gave you trouble. First of all, not drawing this arrow, because then we're going to exceed an octet here. So that was this arrow here. When the nucleophile attacks the carbonyl carbon, we have to make room by breaking this pi bond. And the other problem is that I think you were trying to combine this step and this step into a single step, or thinking that you maybe should. Um, that is, you were worried that the leading group hadn't left yet, but it wasn't supposed to have left yet. First, the nucleophile attacks while the leaving group is still around. Only after that does the leaving group leave. This is another mechanism that I feel is very important to understand. But as usual, it's also important to be able to draw the products without the mechanism. So how could we draw the products without the mechanism here? Well, the key thing is, again, to follow this basic pattern. This actually shouldn't be very difficult. You simply identify the carbonyl carbon that's getting attacked, put in your asterisks, 
and you erase its leaving group mm -hmm. and replace it with the nucleophilic atom. And who's the nucleophilic atom going to be? The alpha carbon from the other ester. Now, in this case, it was a little bit complicated because so um, where this used to be attached to the OET, now it's attached to the alpha carbon from the other ester. It was a little bit more complicated here because they were all part of the same molecule. So for intramolecular reactions, you probably are better using the mechanism. Okay. But uh, if, uh, for intramolecular reactions, we'll probably want to try to learn how to do this without the mechanism. And you simply put the alpha carbon where the leaving group used to be. Okay. And again, it's good that you're comfortable with the protonations here. We can't protonate this until after it leaves, because if we protonated it before it left, it would be positive, which is not consistent with our basic conditions. Right. But then after it leaves, it protonates. That was this step here. Remember, we talked about crossed aldol condensations. Mm -hmm. So we also have to talk about a crossed Clayson condensation. Remember that a crossed aldol condensation. I'm sorry. I imagine it's uh, two different carboxylic acid derivatives. Right, okay. two different esters uh, reacting with each other. And remember that we want to make sure that one of them will be a clear nucleophile and one will be a clear electrophile. Okay. For example, what role would this play in a cross Clayson condensation? Would it be the nucleophile or the electrophile? And why is that? Because it has no um, alpha hydrogens on the alpha carbon. There's no alpha carbon. Yeah, there is no alpha carbon. This is not an alpha carbon because it's not attached to the carbonyl. There's no alpha carbon, so it can't form an enolate. So this would definitely get the asterisks. This would be playing the role of the electrophile, not the nucleophile. So we can use the same trick that we did for the crossed aldol condensation. One of the molecules should have no alpha hydrogens. Okay. So what role would this play, nucleophile or electrophile? Electrophile. And again, there's no alpha carbons. This is a kind of weird double ester. It's probably not even called an ester, but we can go through the same reaction. Again, there's no alpha carbons, so it has to play the electrophilic role. It can't form an enolate. Nucleophile or electrophile? Electrophile. Again, there's no alpha carbons, um, or at least no alpha hydrogens. Now, this is a kind of weird double ester again, but one of them can get attacked by an enolate. Or maybe both of them can get attacked by an enolate. I don't know. But anyway, this would definitely not be forming the enolate itself. Would this be the nucleophile or the electrophile? Because it has no uh, alpha hydrogens. Now there is an alpha carbon, but it has no alpha hydrogens. It's already full up with bonds. So again, this would get the start. So we use the same types of tricks that we would use for an aldol condensation. You want to have one part, one of the molecules has no alpha hydrogens, so it can't form the enolate. Well, to save time, we'll start trying to do these without the mechanism. Right. So let's see if we can just go straight to the product. Okay. And we'll really try to save time and just draw one final product. We won't try to draw any of the intermediates. Let's just see if we can draw the final product after both of these steps.